Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Welcome back to another video in my channel, Jason's Online English School. Okay, today is Wednesday, and on Wednesdays, as you remember, we have level B1. Okay, B1, which is intermediate. Okay, level B1 intermediate. Okay, all right, and today is class number 10. I apologize for the mistake. It's not online class now. Uh, class number nine, it's online class number 10, not number nine. So anyway, we today we're going to have a review class, okay? A review class, okay? And we're going to be reviewing, we're going to be reviewing what we've been studying uh, all these uh, weeks before, okay? Let me make sure I have a good connection. Uh, yes, indeed, we do have a good connection. Very good, very good. Okay, so like I said, uh, it's not online class number nine. I apologize for the mistake once again. It is online class number 10. And today we're going to be reviewing what we've been doing in the previous nine classes. Okay, so online class number 10, level B1, intermediate. Okay, review class. First of all, welcome to Jason's Online English School. All right, it's always good to have you back. Okay, on this rainy day here in Madrid, uh, the time right now is 4.16 in the afternoon. It's been raining the whole day, and it looks very, very gloomy today. <laughs> very gloomy, but we need the rain in any case. Okay, so let's not complain. We need the rain. Okay, all right. So, welcome to Jason's Online English School. All right, now let's move on. Remember the English levels there are. There are six of them, as I always say. A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. And one more time, since today is Thursday, we are in Wednesday, rather. Since today is Wednesday, I'm sorry, we are going to study level B1, which is intermediate. Okay, level B1 on Wednesdays. Tomorrow, we will have level B2. And last but not least, on Friday, we will have level C1. Okay, so remember today's date. First, we have the British version. Of course, hello, Umberto, how are you? Well, good morning to you. Good afternoon for us here in Spain. <laughs> well, thank you, Umberto, for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. So, British, today is Wednesday, the 4th of November, 2020. American version, today is Wednesday, November 4th, 2020. Who will win in America? Hmm, that's a good question. Who is going to win? Is it going to be Biden or is it going to be Trump? Okay, I have my favorite, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> okay, hello, Mario. How are you? Good morning to you and good afternoon to me. <laughs> Remember, it is 4.15 here in Madrid on, uh, on this rainy day. So, yes, Wednesday, the 4th of November, 2020. Uh, Wednesday, November 4th, 2020. Okay, let's move on. Let's see what else we have for today. So like I said, today we are going to have a review class. Okay, this is class number 10 or lesson number 10. Uh, we're going to have a review lesson of uh, based on everything that we did in the previous classes, the previous lessons. Okay, so let's begin with expressions to say how boring you find something. Okay, we can say, I can say that I find it interesting. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't share your enthusiasm. Hello, Jose Maria, how are you? Welcome back. Welcome back, Jose Maria. It's always a pleasure to have you as well on this rainy day here in Madrid. So, sentence number three. It's as interesting as watching paint dry. Remember, we are talking about expressions to say how boring you find something. Number four. I can see what all the fuss is about. So, next one. It's as dull as ditch water. Mm. Next one, it does nothing for me. It does nothing for you. Okay, next one, it leaves me cold. Next one, it bores me to tears. What a bore. And last one, how boring, how tedious, or how dull. All right, you can use all those expressions, remember, to say how boring you find something. And we continue. Because now we are going to review expressions to say or to excuse for being late. Hello, Paulito. How are you? Welcome back, Paulito. It's always good to have you. So, welcome, gentlemen. Uh, so far, we have four gentlemen. We have Umberto, Mario, Jose Maria, and Paulito. No women today. Where are the girls? Where are the girls? <laughs> Come on, ladies. Join the channel. <laughs> so, expressions to uh, excuse for being late. It's not as e an easy place to find. I got lost coming here. The roads were chock-a-block. 
Hmm, I couldn't find a parking space. The traffic was terrible. The bus was late. I had to wait ages for a bus. I slept right through the alarm. The alarm didn't go off. Sorry, I didn't hear the alarm clock. So, I don't know which one is your favorite, but all of them are expressions <laughs> used to excuse yourself for being late. I don't like to be late. I don't like being late. I hate it, as a matter of fact. But not everybody's like me. Some people are always late, and that's the way it is. Uh, and you're not going to change them. So, there is nothing we can do about that. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to move on to talk about expressions to avoid giving your opinion. Sometimes you don't want to give your opinion because you don't like something. And here are some expressions you can use. I couldn't say. I've never given it much thought. Hmm. Your guess is as good as mine. I don't have any feelings either way. So if you ask me who is going to win in America, I could tell you, um, I don't know, next one, I really don't know what to say, and I really don't. <laughs> who knows? I really don't know. Uh, or next one, I really can't say, but nobody can. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. It doesn't affect me either way. In this case, it does, but it doesn't make any difference to me. It does. Uh, that's an interesting question. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, because who knows who's going to win. All right. So, again, these are expressions to avoid giving your opinion. You don't want to express yourself either way, uh, one way or the other. And these are the words of the sentences that you can use. Okay. Now, expressions to show our relief. Okay. Our relief. Now, we're going to move on to these expressions now. Phew. Wow. Okay. Thank God for that. What a relief. I'm so relieved to hear that. You had me worried there, or you can also say you had me worried for a moment. That's a weight off my mind. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. You have no idea what a relief it is to hear. That's one less thing to worry about. What a stroke of luck. And the last one. Oh, well. All's well that ends well. Okay. So these ones are expressions to, related to show our relief but there are more let's move on because now we are going to review expressions to talk about cheap prices when you don't pay a lot of money okay so expressions to talk about cheap prices for instance you pay a lot more in other places okay it was quite cheap that's a good price it wasn't very expensive i'm happy with the price it wasn't that expensive, really. I thought it'd be more expensive. It was quite reasonable, actually. It was good value for money. And the last one, it didn't cost that much. So once again, I want to emphasize that we are reviewing uh, expressions that we have studied in the previous nine lessons. Today is our review class. Lesson number 10, we are reviewing things that we have studied previously. So if you missed any of the other lessons, this is your good chance to review them. Okay, now let's move on to expressions to delay answering. Okay, expressions to delay answering. When you don't really want to answer, you have to think of something. And here are some expressions that you can use. Once again, we saw them previously in another lesson, but here they are again. Now, that's an interesting question. Hmm. It's on the tip of my tongue. Huh. Let me get this right. Now, let me think. Um, what's the word for it? Um, how shall I put it? Hmm. Hang on a moment. Hang on a second. Hang on a mo or hang on a sec. So you can use either one of those. Just a moment or just a second. Now, let me see. Mm, well, you see. So here are expressions to delay answering, either because you don't want to answer or because you don't know what to say. Okay. So there are many, many, many expressions. I mean, you don't need to know all of them, but uh, just be familiarized with them in case somebody else uses them okay so again you don't need to know all of them because in the end we will be using one or two we don't use all of them but anyway let's move on to expressions to show your disappointment when there is something you don't like you could say hmm what we had been led to expect was or 
he did not live up to expectation. Mm. Or, we had high hopes for... Or you can also say, I was so looking forward to... Next one. That's just so disappointing. Mm. What a letdown. What a bummer. That's too bad. How disappointing. What a pity or what a shame. Okay, so these ones are expressions to show your disappointment. When you're disappointed, you don't like something, you feel frustrated. So here are the words that you can use or the expressions that you can use. Now, let's move on to now prepositional phrases that we studied also in the past. Prepositional phrases with the preposition on. Okay, so we have on watch. On schedule, or you can pronounce on schedule. Okay, schedule is the British pronunciation, and schedule is the American pronunciation. I prefer schedule. On the record, on the road, on oath, on paying off, on the air, on balance, on a diet. I am not on a diet. How many of you are on a diet? Is anybody there on a diet? <laughs> on a journey. On a trip, on a large scale, on a small scale, on a pension, and the last one is on a regular basis, meaning very, very often. Okay, I exercise, for instance, on a regular basis. That's why I look one year younger. Okay, <laughs> so on a regular basis. Okay, don't forget that uh, having a good sense of humor is good. It makes you look younger. <laughs> you live on a diet, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, okay. I'm not going to ask you how much you weigh. You don't have to tell me. So Mario lives on a diet. Okay, well, <laughs> all right. Good luck. We love your diet. Thank you for telling us. <laughs> okay, now remember the difference between make and do. Uh, they're hard. They're hard because there is no perfect rule. Uh, so how do you use make and how do you use, uh, when do you use do? Uh, it depends on the expression. So the only way is practice, practice, and practice. Okay, practice makes perfect. Remember, uh, today I sent uh, the, the channel, the, the group channels um, on, on WhatsApp. I sent you an expression. And the expression is practice makes perfect. And some people ask me, okay, is it not perfection? Practice makes perfection? Well, no, sir. That's the way we say it in Spanish. But no, in English, the, uh, the expression is practice makes perfect. Let me write it down because I send it to you. I'm sure if you check on WhatsApp. Okay, let me see if I can write. Practice makes perfect. I'm writing everything in capital letters because it is an expression. Hello, Katie. How are you? Welcome back. Oh, the first lady today. Okay. Uh, Pablo is on a diet as well. Okay, okay. So remember the expression practice makes perfect. Okay. It is not practice makes perfection. No, the expression is practice makes perfect. And I've had a few people asking me, okay, I thought it's perfection. I said, no, it's not. It's practice makes perfect. So in English, sometimes uh, there are things that don't make sense, but uh, that's the way they are. In Spanish, we have things that don't make sense to, uh, to English speaking people, and that's the way they are. So practice makes perfect. Okay, so the more you practice, the more you will do things. Okay, let's review this sentence with make and do. Number one, John worked hard and did his best at his job, but he still wasn't promoted. So the, the, the expression is to do your best. In this case, to do his best. I mean, it is in the past, but the expression is to do your best. Number two, the teenagers were making such a noise that the neighbor called the police. So the expression is to make a noise. And of course, then you need to conjugate it. Okay, you need to conjugate it according to the sentence, the structure. Number three, he makes a payment on her debt every month. Soon, she'll have finished paying it off. So the expression is to make a payment. Okay. Number four, so many chores to do. I need to clean the bathroom and the kitchen over and change all the beds. Okay. Hoover, rather. So in this case, to do your chores. That is the expression. Chores are the uh, the things that you need to do at home, cleaning the bathroom, uh, the dust, the kitchen, make the bed, etc. So that's to do your chores. Okay. Number five. Sorry, I've made a mistake. The restaurant isn't here, but on another street. So the expression here is to make a mistake. Hello, Julie. How are you? Okay. 
All right, you're still thinking about the elections? Mm. Many people are, many people are. The, lesson, the elections in the States. We'll see who wins, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, number six. It's late and we should go home. Let's make a move. So the expression is to make a move. All right. So uh, the only way to know them is by, by reading and listening and watching TV series, movies and documentaries. It's the only way, it's the only way. But practice, 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 because practice makes perfect. Okay, don't forget, don't forget that. Okay, let's move on now. We're going to talk about, remember, on another lesson, on one of those uh, previous nice lessons, we talked about adjectives and adverbs. If I remember correctly, I think it was the first lesson, adjectives and adverbs. Okay, so here we go. Could I have a quick word with you? Number two, this is a slow train. Number three, he talked very interestingly about his work. Number four, you've cooked that meat wonderfully. Well, thank you. Number five, I've got an easy job for you. If it is an easy job, probably it's not worth it. Number six, she writes in perfect English. Good for her. Not many people do. Okay, number seven, she sings very quickly. Okay. And number eight, could you speak more quietly, please? Because I'm trying to sleep. Okay. So let's move on to so do I when you agree with somebody, and uh, neither do I when you agree with something that somebody said in a negative way. For example, number one. I'm a student. You could say, so am I, or I'm not. It depends. Number two, I'm not French. You could say, neither am I, or I am. So, number three, I went on holiday last year. You could say, so did I, or I didn't. Number four, I'll wake up early tomorrow. And the other person can say, so will I, or I won't. Number five, I've studied German. And the other person can say, so have I, or I haven't. Number six, I won't go to work on Saturday. Neither will I, or I will. Number seven, I didn't go to the supermarket. Oh, really? <laughs> Neither did I, or I did. Number eight, I, have, I haven't been to Madrid. Oh, neither have I, or I have. Number nine, I don't speak Arabic. Neither do I, or I do. And last but not least, I have been to Australia. Oh, really? So have I, or I haven't. Now, notice that it is very important to understand the, uh, the auxiliary verb the person is saying at the beginning of the sentence. For example, if this, on the first one you have, I'm a student, so the verb that he or she is using is the verb to be. So to say, so am I, or I am not, you also use the verb to be. But let's move on to sentence number six, for instance. I won't go to work on Saturday. That is equivalent to saying, I will not, okay? I won't, I will not. So the phrasal verb is will, and that's the one you have to use when you say neither will I or I will. Number eight, for instance, I haven't been to Madrid or I have not been to Madrid. So the auxiliary verb is have, in this case haven't. So that's why you use neither have I or I have, okay? Number nine, I don't speak Arabic. The auxiliary in this case is do not, don't. Okay, in the negative. So the other sentence become the other sentence become neither do I or I do. So depending on the auxiliary on the first sentence, that's the one you use when you say neither do I, so have I, so did I, so will I, etc. etc. Et All right. So don't forget, pay attention to the auxiliary verb used in the previous sentence or in the first sentence. Okay, it's not hard, but you can always say me too or me neither. Uh, that is the easiest way, me too, me neither, it's much easier, but I prefer, so do I, neither do I, so will I, etc., etc. All right, present perfect, we studied this one because Mario, uh, one of those uh, previous lessons, he asked me to, uh, to dedicate a lesson to the present perfect, and I did, I did. So Mario is happy, and so am I, yeah, so am I. Okay, so number one, Elaine has been in hospital three weeks or three times this year. Wow. Okay, number two, I have played tennis since I was eight years old. Not my case. Number three, I have wanted to be an actor for many years. Yes, I would have loved to be an actor. Okay, I chose the wrong profession. <laughs> number four, I have never liked bananas. I think they're horrible. Mm, I don't agree. I think they're good. Number five, 
what's the most interesting city you have ever visited? I told her before, Rio de Janeiro. No offense to uh, other cities around the world, but to me, the most interesting one I have ever visited is that one. And I visited a few. Not a lot, but a few. Okay, now we have to complete the sentence with been or gone. Remember that one. Number one, your hair looks nice. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Your hair looks nice. Have you been to the hairdressers? Oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Okay, number two. I've been to the shop, but there was no bread. Sorry. Okay. No bread today. Number three. Reginald's been to Istanbul on five times or on business. Five or six times this year. Number four, Miss Evans is in her office. She's probably gone home. Yeah, probably. And number five, where's my passport gone? I can't find it anywhere. Where is it gone? Oh, no. I can't find it anywhere. Okay. So don't forget, practice makes perfect. If you study English a lot, if you read it, if you listen to it, you watch my channel and my videos. Practice makes perfect. Okay, you will learn a lot. Now, difference between another versus other or others. Here we are. Number one, another person. Remember, another is with singular. It's with a singular noun, another. Other is for plural nouns. And others is also for plural nouns. But you don't have a noun after the word others. So once again, another for singular, other for plurals. And others also for plurals but you don't have a noun after. You can have a verb or a period, but no noun, okay? Let's review that. Number one, another person, singular. Other books, plural. By the way, my dog is snoring, so if you hear strange noises, oh, my dog, Iki, is right here next to me, and she's sleeping and she's snoring, okay? <laughs> so if you hear strange noises, the dog is snoring, believe it or not. Uh, hold on, I'm going to stay quiet for a few seconds. It's not snoring now, but I can't see. <laughs> anyway, so another person, singular, all the books, plural, another bag, singular, another three cokes. When you have a number, it is also another. Uh, there is no other way, that is an expression. There is no other way. The other students, plural. Uh, the other child, in this case, when you have the article the or the in front of other, it could be for singular or for plural. That is an exception out of the many that are in English language. Okay, another opportunity, singular, no problem. Number nine, I have three bags. One is here, where are the others? So that is a typical example of others with no noun after it, okay? However, number 10 is followed by a verb, okay? As long as it is not a noun, we're right. So I have 20 students, 12 students love English, the others hate it, okay? I hope it's not your case. I hope you like English. Okay, so once again, Another for singular, other for plural, others also for plural without the noun, and then you have the other for singular or the other for plural. That one is an exception. Okay, now well, let's see what else we have here. Come and go. Remember, this is uh, one of the last ones that we did, I believe. Come and go. Remember, come is a, it's an irregular verb. Come, came, come. That is the conjugation. And go is also an irregular verb. So you say go, went, gone okay so come came come go went gone all right example number one mary wants to go out with sam okay sam you're lucky because mary's pretty congratulations <laughs> number two come and sit down come in and sit down number three mary please come back i'm sorry i didn't mean it you're nice i'm sorry i didn't do it uh, number four here's a restaurant let's go in okay Okay, uh, Pablito says something. I like your message. Thank you very much. Pablo says, Rio de Janeiro is known as Marvelous City. Really? Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I've never been to Brasilia, uh, Pablito. I'm sure it's pretty too. It's a pretty city. But um, Rio, to me, I've been uh, to uh, quite a few places and quite a few cities around the world. And to me, Rio is, is the most beautiful I've ever seen. No offense to other cities. But Rio is just is my favorite. Okay, so yeah, Pablito, you are. Uh, thank you very much for your message. Okay, you're corroborating my 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 comment. Marvelous city. Uh, there is a reason for the season. That's why it's called Marvelous City. Okay. Anyway, number. Thank you, Pablo, once again for your message. Um, number five. I'm fed up. I'm fed up means I'm very very tired. I'm just tired. I'm fed up. I'm fed up. Let's go out for a coffee. 
Number six. Oh, there you are. Come in, come in. Have a seat. Come in and have a seat. Number seven. We come from Venezuela. Number eight. Come on, we're late. Come on, come on, we're late. Come on, we're late. Number nine. Do you want to go out with me tonight, baby? Yes, let's have some dinner. Do you want to go out with me tonight? And number 10, come over to my apartment. Yes, come over to my apartment. That's when you're talking on the phone. You come over to my apartment, okay? I'm all alone. Pablo says, even if there is a, if there is a, a known song, Samba, about Rio. Yes, oh, really? I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. Okay. There is a, a known song, a well-known song about Rio, Samba. Okay. I love the music from Rio, too. Well, from Brazil. Such a nice uh, music. Thank you, Pablo, once again for your comment. Pablo, ladies and gentlemen, Pablo from Brasilia, from Brazil, the capital of the, city, of the country, Brasilia. Thank you, Pablo. Okay, now, uh, NATO phonetic, phonetic alphabet. Remember this one? Okay, for each letter of the alphabet, there is an equivalent word, okay? So you could say, for instance, A as in alpha, or you could say A for alpha, or simply alpha. I personally prefer A as in, personally. But if you're going to use four or nothing, it's up to you. So let me read them with as in, okay? A as in alpha, B as in bravo, C as in Charlie, D as in delta, E as in echo, F as in foxtrot, G as in golf, H as in hotel, I as in India, and J as in Juliet. That covers the first column. Second column, K as in kilo, M as in Mike, N as in November, O as in Oscar, P as in Papa, R as in Romeo, S as in Sierra, T as in Tango, U as in Uniform, and V as in Victor. That covers the second column. Now, the last column, only four letters. W as in Whiskey, X as in X-Ray, Y as in Yankee, and Z or Z as in Zulu. Okay, remember you use this in the military, in the aeronautical business, a secretary on the phone or whenever you need to spell your email or your last name on the phone so they are very very frequently used okay and my pilot so my brother is a pilot and he uses it a lot okay now um they say lima queen lima queen uh, i'm not sure i understand your comment pa mario um lima queen uh oh i forgot uh q s in quebec i'm sorry q s in quebec yeah i forgot to include them i don't know uh once again i made a mistake yeah i know L as in Lima and Q as in Quebec. Quebec, no, no Queen. No Queen. Q as in Quebec, the city in Canada. I'm sorry, I forgot to include it, Mario. My mistake. I'm, I'm working too hard. <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to talk about different universities around the world, okay? This week, ladies and gentlemen, we begin a new topic around the world. So I'm going to be discussing a few uh, of the most important and interesting cities around the world. And of course, I began with mine. Madrid, okay, from Madrid to heaven. Madrid, that's where I was born. Not where I have lived all my life, because I lived many years in the States. But uh, yeah, that's where I was born, the most beautiful city in the world after uh, Rio. <laughs> no, they're totally different, they're totally different. Anyway, country Spain, okay, Spain, yes, sir. The elevation, it is about 667 meters over sea level which is the same as saying 2,188 feet over sea level. So it's not very high, of course, no problem here. Now, the area, how big, it is, how big is it? The area, including the capital and municipality, okay, because there are many, many uh, small cities around Madrid, and everything together is considered the community of Madrid, okay? It's like in the states of New York, you have the city, city New York, and then the state is called also New York. Here is the same. So Madrid is the capital. And the community of Madrid is the municipality. And it has 604,31 square kilometers, which is the same as 233.33 square miles. So it's pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big, pretty big. Now, in terms of the population in the year 2018, it hasn't changed too much in two years. Uh, again, including the capital city and municipality, we're talking about 6.6 .6 million people. <laughs> That's a lot of people. 6.6 .6 million people, okay, which makes Madrid the third largest city after London and Berlin here in Europe, okay? The third largest after London and Berlin here in Europe, okay, in terms of population. So that's pretty good. Now, when was Madrid founded? The city was founded in the ninth, on the ninth century. It was founded on the ninth century. That's uh, a few years ago, on the ninth century. <laughs> 
Okay, now last but not least, why is Madrid famous for? Or what is the city famous for? Several things. Uh, first of all, we have one of the most uh, important museums in the world, I would say, El Museo del Prado, or Prado Museum. Okay, it's very good. I've seen it a few times. It's very, very good. Even if you don't like art, I recommend you to visit it. Okay, now we also have the center of all the roads here in Spain, and it's called Kilometer Zero. Okay, I've been there a few times as well. Very, very interesting. The center of all the roads here in Spain, the country. Now we have the famous and excellent calamari sandwiches. Ooh, they're so good. They are so good. So there are a lot of bars here in the downtown area where you can have calamari sandwiches. Remember, calamari is a squid. What they call it, or we call them calamari. Well, we call them calamares. Bocadillos de calamares. That's the way we call them in Spain. Spanish, and they are excellent. They are excellent. Okay, we also have the oldest restaurant in the world here in Madrid. I've never been there, but I know what it is, but I've never been inside. It's called Sobrino de Botín. Okay, Sobrino Botín is here in Madrid. And last but not least, we also have the biggest Zara store in the world for clothes. Okay, the biggest Zara store in the world, which is located in Paseo de la Castellana, the longest uh, street here in Madrid. I don't know exactly what it is. I know the area, but I don't know exactly what it is because I'm not really interested in clothes. So, uh, But yes, we have the biggest Zara store in the world here in Madrid. Okay, they have another one in New York. So, uh, But the one in Madrid is bigger. Okay, so that is in terms of Madrid. Uh, next week, London. Okay, so if you want to come back next week, we'll be talking about London. Today's joke. Are you ready for today's joke? Here it goes. I hope you like it. It was kind of good, and I decided to include it <laughs> on this lesson because it was pretty good. It goes like this. Luke, I am your father. Seriously? That uh, joke's old. Uh, by the way, who is this? Someone hacked me into my phone and changed all the names. No, seriously. I'm your father. Mom wants you to come home. Did you just seriously hack into my phone yesterday just to change your contact name to Darth Vader to say that? Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, I hope you like the joke. Uh, of course, it refers to uh, uh, Star Wars. If you like Star Wars, I really like uh, those movies and TV series. And I thought it was appropriate to bring it here. So anyway, again, it's just a joke. Let me know if you got it. Let me know if you understood the joke, if you like it. Uh, please send me a message. Send me a message. I loved it. The moment I read it, I just loved it. So, did you just seriously hack into my phone yesterday just to uh, change your contact name to Darth Vader to say that? Yeah. So, anyway. Um, so, Pablito says, I love Madrid from Madrid to heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From Madrid to heaven. Okay. But anyway, I hope you like the joke because we're talking about the joke now. And uh, we'll see. Let's move on. Today's thought. Uh, today's thought was something that uh, Nelson Mandela mentioned, and I thought it was nice. But the moment I read it, I thought, well, this is good, this is good. And it goes like this. Education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. And I agree. Education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. That was mentioned by Nelson Mandela. Okay, may he rest in peace. Okay, so yes, sir, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. But uh, some people don't agree. So, well, uh, just a matter of opinion. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, this is all for today. To learn more, subscribe to my channel, This is Online English School. Okay, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. And to share it with your friends and family members who couldn't attend the lessons, uh, please, please tell them to watch this uh it's lesson number 10, review class, review lesson, okay. So, if anybody wants classes with me, like Pablito, we start the classes on Sunday, and we have another class next Sunday. If you want classes with me, don't forget to contact me, uh, the number of your screen, plus 34663072251, or send me a WhatsApp, an email to gmailexpress at gmail.com. All right, so Pablo, I'll be looking forward to our second class on Sunday, and... Um, well, this is all for today, folks. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll be back next week with another level B1 class. And I'll be back tomorrow with level B2. In case you are interested, we are also going to have another uh, review class for tomorrow. Okay. 
Uh, you're very welcome, Humberto. You're very welcome, Mario. You're very welcome, Pablo, Jose Maria, everybody who joined me today. Julie, thank you so much for being with me. Have a nice day, and I'll be back next week with another B1, like I said, or tomorrow with a B2 class, review class as well. Tomorrow and Friday will be both of them review lessons. Okay, so take care. God bless you, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.